Now we all remember what Trey Jefferson used to do back in his high school days. Even though he was only about 5 foot 7, he could really go head to head with the best of them. A lot of people used to compare him to either Nate Robinson or the high school basketball phenom Akil Carr. And some people were even saying that he was better than Akil Carr. It's debatable, but it's kind of hard to pick a side due to the fact that their play style is very similar. If they were both to somehow play a one on one in their prime, who do you think will win? Let me know what you think down in the comment section. But, anyways, Trey Jefferson was just exciting to watch. I mean, his ball handling skills was just out of this world. He was finishing on people much bigger than him and he was getting up high on his dunks for real i haven't seen any videos of him catching bodies but he definitely has the potential and if i was to guess his vertical i would say at least 40 inches at least even though he was so cold, people were still doubting the fact that he was going to produce on the next level due to his height. But he proved all them wrong by getting a D1 scholarship, and he was even his team's top scorer. Everything was going good for him at the time, but out of nowhere, he ended up getting suspended indefinitely from his team. And since then, we haven't heard about him transferring to another organization. What happened to Trey Jefferson's basketball career? I know it's a couple of y'all that's not really hip on basketball, but y'all still come to watch my videos just to hear my voice. And y'all be getting out of hand sometimes too. In any other situation, I think this is kind of weird, but y'all be showing me support so it's all good for real. Y'all can say anything y'all want honestly. But anyways, for the ones that don't know, Trey Jefferson is a 5'7 point guard from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He used to play on the same court as some of the most elite players at the time, and he used to be giving them competition. NBA players like Jalen Brown, Don Maker and Dennis Smith Jr. And him and Dennis Smith Jr. had a little battle going on one game. And it was looking like Trey Jefferson was giving him buckets. But I guess that does happen every once in a while. All Dennis Smith Jr. gotta do is keep his head up. Everything gonna be good. Dennis Smith Jr. Stay silent, my nigga. But the fact that Trey Jefferson was competing against these top players just so how competitive and fearless he was. He actually developed this competitive nature when he was a kid. He was that one kid that always wanted to play with the older kids. Of course, if you're a teenager, you're not trying to play with somebody that's not even in your age group. Most of the time, they're just a liability on the court. Most of the time. So whenever Trey Jefferson used to call next, they would just laugh at him and they would just continue playing. But he was dead serious. And to show how serious he was, he would just walk to the middle of half court while they're playing and he would just sit down. He'd say either he gonna play or nobody's gonna play. Now that's just another level of fearlessness because that situation could have went terribly wrong. When you're messing up the older guys from playing, it can get really ugly, for real. Trey Jefferson is just fearless. Salute. For the 2016 through 2017 season, Trey Jefferson had signed to play basketball at the Texas Southern University. He actually had some scholarships for some bigger schools, but he said that he wanted to play for HBCU. There's not too many NBA players who play for HBCU, well at least not in this generation. No, scratch that, I believe Kyle O'Quinn did. I don't know for sure, correct me if I'm wrong down in the comment section. But yeah, he was planning to come to Texas Southern to show out. And in his first game, he almost went for 30, putting up 27 points. They ended up getting blown out, but he was going to get his. And he definitely wasn't scared to shoot because he put up 30 shots and 10 of them was three-pointers. Like they say, shooters going to shoot, whether it's falling or not. But throughout his freshman season, he actually performed pretty decent, averaging 15 points, two rebounds, and two assists. And he had five games where he scored 20 or more. This was a good foundation for him to start his career. And as he got more experience, he was only going to get better. And that's exactly what happened. During his sophomore season, he stepped it up big time. He boosted his numbers up from 15 to 23 points a game. And I know you're probably thinking that he was just jacking up shots and some of them was just falling. Well, you would be halfway right. Even though he had the green light to shoot whenever he want, his shooting percentage wasn't even that bad. He ended up shooting 42% from the field and 40% from the three-point line. And keep in mind, he shot at least eight three-pointers a game. Again, shooters gonna shoot. He scored over 25 points 12 times that season. And he was also ranked top Top five in assist in his conference. And to top it off, he was even shooting 82% from the free throw line. Even though the team's record wasn't that great, he was definitely giving it his all. They finished with a regular season record of 16 wins and 19 losses. But somehow, they still ended up making it to the NCAA tournament. And Trey Jefferson even helped them win their first game. He was balling out. He dropped 25 points, 8 rebounds, and 3 assists. He was just locked in. And he was ready to wheel his team all the way to the Final Four. But the next round, they ended up getting blown out by Xavier. It just wasn't a 
contest, unfortunately. But besides that loss, everything was looking bright for Trey Jefferson. I mean, he made a big stride in this game, and he was only going to get better as the years go on. But unfortunately, that's just not going to be the case. Texas Southern decided that they were going to suspend Trey Jefferson indefinitely. It's not really clear on what actually led to him being suspended. There were a lot of rumors going around, but at the end of the day, it's none of our business. We got to stop worrying about other people's personal lives that we don't even know. So if it's not about basketball, it's out of sight, out of mind. Taste a bag. Don't worry about what I'm doing. The only thing that Trey Jefferson had to say about the incident was on Twitter. He said they trying to knock me off the map after I put him on. He's not directly speaking about Texas Southern, so I'm not going to try to connect any dots or anything. Now let's say, hypothetically speaking, that he was talking about them. I mean, that statement would be speaking facts. You don't really hear about Texas Southern like that, basketball-wise. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't even be talking about them if it wasn't for Trey Jefferson. So when he decided to transfer, people thought that with the talent that he has, another program would have picked him up in a heartbeat. Beat, but that just wasn't the case. He didn't get picked up for the 2018 through 2019 season, but he still has two years of eligibility left. So I'm sure a school is gonna offer him a scholarship by next season. And he's still working on his game, so he gonna be ready. We just gonna have to wait and see. But until then, make sure y'all go show him some love on Instagram and Twitter. I'm gonna leave the links down in the description. Peace. Real rap, no mumble. Pray to God, don't stumble. Real flex, but humble. Get a bag, don't fumble. I know niggas really with it. Do the town don't crumble. If you want it, go and get it. Gotta show your hustle. Not go and work, yeah. Run it up, yeah. Choose wise, double R, Billy truck.